Children's Bane, Death of Man, and Poison Parsnip are just a few of the names given to this ultra-deadly plant. It may look like it's topped with adorable lacy parasols, but this carrot relative is a straight-up murderer. This baddie has killed dozens and dozens of people and endless livestock. This is the silent assassin, Water Hemlock. Hi, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Floralogic. Today we're teaching you how to avoid the most violently toxic plant that grows in North America, the water hemlock. Water hemlock is a perennial that grows in swampy areas of pastures, meadows, and ditches, and on the edges of ponds and stream banks all across the Northern Hemisphere. There are four fairly similar species of water hemlock in this deadly genus. Secuta maculata and Secuta bulbifera can be found almost everywhere across North America. Secuta douglasi is only found in Northwestern North America. And the fourth and most widespread, Secuta verosa, is native to not only northwestern North America, but also northern Asia and northern and central Europe. The small white flowers of the water hemlock grow in umbels, from the Latin word for little sunshade, atop stems that can reach almost two meters tall. You should never, however, ever stand under or anywhere near these umbels. On the outside, water hemlock's roots look very carroty and their flowers look a lot like a bunch of other non-deadly carrot relatives, like cow parsnip, field caraway, common yarrow, water parsnip, and even the garden variety Queen Anne's lace. It's this misidentification that's led to so many deaths by accidental ingestion. Since it can be readily absorbed by any mucous membrane, several children have even died from playing with whistles made from the hollow stems of water hemlock. On the inside, however, water hemlock shares nothing with these harmless dupes. Although these plants are members of the carrot family, they're anything but good for your health. Water hemlock is packed from tip to root with toxins that can easily kill livestock and humans alike. Be sure to check our giant hogweed episode to learn all about another angry carrot relative that wants to hurt you. If you get the sap of the giant hogweed on your skin, it can make it wildly sensitive to sunlight, making you an itchier version of Dracula. This double whammy of sap plus sun is called photodermatitis. Within 24 to 48 hours, you'll break out in nasty, weepy rashes and blisters that can even cause permanent scarring or discoloration. The sap is most toxic when the plant is flowering, but it's probably best to avoid this plant anytime. If you do tangle with the hogweed, try to keep the sap-slathered skin out of the sun. If you get the sap in your eye, it can cause temporary or possibly permanent blindness. Even though it's been shown that carrots don't specifically improve eye health, I'm sure they'd still disown giant hogweed if they could. While it smells like fresh turnip and even tastes sweet, water hemlock should never be anywhere near your dinner table. This plant is positively crammed with a violent convulsant called cicutoxin that sets to work on messing you up almost immediately. Before we get into how water hemlock will kill you nine ways from Sunday, it must be mentioned that this plant shouldn't be confused with another deadly member of the carrot family, Conium maculatum otherwise known as poison hemlock, or just plain hemlock. Though also highly toxic, poison hemlock has different chemicals that'll kill you, most notably the alkaloid conine. Poison hemlock was famously used to off Socrates, but that'll have to wait for another episode. Carrots sure do seem to have a lot of questionable relatives, but I guess every family has their murderous uncles, right? Or is it just mine? While all parts of water hemlock are poisonous, the roots are especially deadly since they contain the highest concentration of cicutoxin. Cicutoxin itself is a yellow-colored, unsaturated alcohol. But this one is not the kind of alcohol you'd be tempted to knock back on a Friday night. Just a single two to three centimeter bite of the root containing this lethal toxin can easily kill an adult. It only takes ingesting around 0.5% of your body weight in water hemlock for you to give up the ghost. While we still aren't clear on how exactly it kills so effectively, we do know that cicutoxin acts on the central nervous system and blocks the receptors in the brain that are responsible for controlling nerve cell hyperactivity. Once too many of these speed bumps of the mind have been deactivated, nerve activity goes haywire, causing a seizure. Let's take a look at the three levels of water hemlock poisoning. Within 15 to 90 minutes, mild poisoning will produce nausea, abdominal pain, and vomiting, which is thought to be a protective measure to expel the undigested parts of the plant. In severe cases comes excessive drooling, sweating, and breathing difficulties, which lead to the skin taking on a bluish purplish color. Finally, in fatal poisonings, which occur about 30% of the time, big bad seizures known as tonic-clonic convulsions begin. The ingester usually dies from status epilepticus, which is when a seizure lasts for more than five minutes, causing cardiac arrest and respiratory failure. 
There's no antidote for water hemlock poisoning, and treatment usually just focuses on relieving symptoms. Water hemlock is hard to control. Since it grows in wet environments, herbicides aren't super effective. And since even just touching it can lead to the poison being absorbed into the skin, pulling it out is also not usually recommended. If you do rip it out, make sure you wear protective gear. Get all the roots and burn the entire plant. For all these reasons and more, it's extremely important that all you would-be foragers out there can positively identify water hemlock so you can give it an extra wide burn. Trust me when I say you don't want to mess with North America's most toxic plant. So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Peace. Hey. It's always the first haze, the weird. Hi. It's like when you look down at your hands for too long and then you're like, huh? Let's check it out. The small white flowers of the water hemp, water, water. <laughs> You should never, however, ever stand on ever, ever, nunder, nunder. Don't make your kids whistles from random shit outside. Don't do it. Be sure to check our giant hogweed episode to learn all about another angry killer that I've had. <laughs> and Dylan thought I wouldn't make mistakes anymore if I had a teleprompter. Ha <laughs> ha! Fooled you! Before we get into how the water him look, but that will have to wait for another episode. <laughs> yeah, I think we're good. Feels good. Feels good. I think we're ready. You're rolling? Let's roll. <laughs> okay, too long of a break there. It was not good, but it was my first one. It only takes ingesting around 0.5% of your body weight in water hemlock for you to give up the ghost. And decrease the weights <gasps> between the birds. But this one is not the kind of alcohol you'd be tempted to knock back on a Friday night. Just a single- Just a single! Okay. <laughs> Let's take a look at the three levels of water hemlock poisoning. <laughs> Today is garbage day on my street, and as you can hear, the garbage man is doing his business loudly and slowly, causing cardiac arrest or respiratory failure. Aww, failure! <laughs> and treatment usually just push her po po. Okay, focuses. That's how I talk. There's no antidote for water hemlock poisoning. And treatment usually just focuses on making you smell less bad, making you not be so gross looking to the first responders, etc. Okay. For all these reasons and more, it's extremely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Hawks. Done. Done. Did it.